Good morning, Masindok Sambales. Good morning to our beloved learners from junior high school, grade 9. You're still here listening to our Serbisho Putog Radio DWSP 101.5 News FM. This is your DepEd Radio Escuela. I'm Teacher Vincent Jefford A. Elbancol, always at the service of the Filipino learners. Your study is from Bamban National High School. I will facilitate you in maximizing your participation as you learn today's lesson. Welcome to Technology and Livelihood Education about tools, equipment, and materials for fabricating for mortars. Learners, please prepare your notebook and pen to take down notes all important ideas from the lesson. Find a comfortable place where you can listen in the study proper. We will now be entering the fourth quarter, week one of this school year. Are you ready learners? At the end of this module, you are expected to number one. Identify tools and materials for fabricating formworks. Number two, prepare tools and materials for fabricating formworks. And three, select appropriate PPE or personal protective equipment. Let's see if you still remember our past lesson. I prepared questions for you to answer. Are you ready to know it? I will read first the direction. Directions. Read the questions carefully. Choose the letter of the correct answer and write your answers on a sheet of paper. Number one. The use of support structures and molds to create structures out of concrete which is poured into a mold. A. Carpentry B. Formwork C. Plywood and D. Timber The answer is B. Formwork Number 2. Stronger, durable, and have longer life than timber formwork and their reuse are more in numbers. A. Plywood B. Steel formwork C. Timber formwork or D. Wooden formwork The answer is B. Steel formwork Number 3 The most commonly used materials for formwork A. Carpentry B. Formwork C. Plywood and D. Timber The correct answer D. Timber Number 4 It can be used for tying bars and mesh They are also suitable for use to be belt back reel A. End cutting nippers B. Tie wire reel C. Tie wire roll and D. Timber The correct answer C. Tie wire roll At this moment, you may now please get your modules distributed by your respective school for the topic for today. You can also get your notebook and ball pen to take down notes about the lesson that I'm going to discuss. Our lesson for today is about tools, equipment, and materials for fabricating formworks. Yes, you heard it right. So, what is formwork? Anybody from the group? Formwork in construction is the use of support structure in molds to create structures 
out of concrete which is poured into a mold. Formwork can be made using molds out of steel wood, aluminum, PVC, plastic, and prefabricated forms. Formwork is an ancillary construction used as a mold for a structure. Into this mold, fresh concrete is placed only to harden it subsequently. The construction of formwork takes time and involves expenditure up to 20 to 25 percent of the cost of the structure or even more. The operation of removing the formwork is known as stripping. Strip formwork can be reused. Reusable form are known as panel form and non-usable are called stationary form. A good formwork should satisfy the following requirements. Strong enough to withstand all types of dead and live loads. Rigidly constructed and efficiently propered in brace both horizontally and vertically. So as to retain its shape. The joints in the formwork should be tight against leakage of cement grout. Construction of formwork should permit the removal of various parts in the desired sequences without damage to the concrete. Materials of the formwork should be cheap, easily available, and should be suitable for reuse. The formwork should be set accurately to the desired line and level should have plain surface. As light as possible. Materials of the formwork should no warp or get distorted when exposed to the elements. Should rest of a firm base. The following points are to be kept in view to affect the economy in the cost of formwork. 1. The plane of the building should imply the minimum numbers of variations in the size of rooms, floor area, etc. so as to permit reuse of the formwork repeatedly. Number 2. Design should be perfect to use slender sections only in a most economical way. Number 3. Minimum sewing or cutting of wooden pieces should be made to enable reuse of the materials a number of times. Formworks are mainly of two types, steel formworks and a wooden formworks. Steel formworks is made of steel sheets, angle irons, T-irons, while wooden formwork consists of props, planks, buttons, ligers, and sheeting. Here are the materials used in formworks. Timber formworks, most commonly materials used for bracing the member, hence called the traditional formwork, can easily be cut to size on site. Joists are replaced with engineered wood beams and support are 12 replaced with metal props. This makes this method more systematic and reusable. Various sizes of members of timber. Plywood. This is by far most commonly materials used for the site. And if handled and stored carefully, it can be used many times. A standard plywood thickness on site is 18 mm. This is usually sufficient for most pores. However, if the formwork is curved, a thinner plywood is used to facilitate bending. Thicker plywood may be used when the weight of concrete costs a standard thickness. 
plywood to bow out, distorting the concrete face. Ply refers to a number of layers and resulting thickness of a plywood board. Some projects need thicker boards, while others can involve smaller pieces instead, depending on the amount of strength needed. Each layer, called a wood veneer, is glued to another layer to create the number of plies needed. Veneers can be a varying thickness themselves. So, be sure to carefully evaluate each type of board you're considering. The thickness of the final board may vary depending where you buy it, even though it has the same number of plies as another. Steel form work. Steel form are stronger, durable, and have longer life than timber form work. In their reuse, are more in numbers. Steel form can be installed and dismantled with greater ease and speed. The quality of exposed concrete surface by using steel form is good in such surfaces need to further treatment. Steel formwork does not absorb moisture from concrete. Steel formwork does not shrink or warp. Aluminum formwork, often used in prefabricated formwork that is put together on site. Aluminum is strong and light and consequently fewer supports and ties and required. The lighter section will deflect more, but this can be avoided by simply following the manufacturer's recommendation. Plastic formwork Glass reinforced plastic or GRP and vacuum form plastic are used when complicated concrete shapes are required. Example, waffle floors. Although vacuum form plastic will always need support, GRP can be fabricated with integral bearers making it self-supporting. Like steel, plastic formwork can be reused many times as long as its care is taken not to score the surface wheels vibrating the concrete. Common formwork tools 1. Tie wire hooks which can be used for tying bar and mesh. They are also suitable for use with belt pack reel. And cutting nippers. Head shape provides optimized movement when tightening steel, mesh, not during reinforced concrete works with cutting edge for a soft and hard wire also suitable for twisting and cutting binding wire. High leverage concreters deeper. 25% less effort required compared to a conventional concreters nippers. Of the same size, extra slim form for tie deep mounted steel rods to lace concrete reinforcing steel with binding wire from a whole wire. Is twisted and cut in a single pass high leverage joint. Minimizing strain, even when thick binding wires are used to high dumping of the cutting stroke on cutting, though the binding wire reduces the strain on the tendons and muscles. Note, if the high leverage concreter snippers and the end cutting nipper tools are not available, you can use pliers or side cutting nippers because these are some tools that are available within our community for holding a small object or for bending and cutting wires. Tie wire strips. It can be used for tying bars in mesh. 
They are also suitable for use with a twisting tool or nips for steel fixing. Tying wire heel. The belt dispenser allows the wire to spool off in an easy flow and allows the iron worker to control its release from the roll in a precise manner, enabling them to tie up the rebar and any configuration or size. Tie wire loop. Tie wire loops which can be used for tying bar and mesh. They are available in black or galvanized. Claw hammer, used for driving and pulling out of nails. Hand saw, in woodworking and carpentry, hand saw also known as panel saw, are used to cut pieces of wood into different shapes. This is usually done in order to join the pieces together in carve a wooden object. They usually operate by having a series of sharp points of some substance that is harder than the wood being cut. A host level is a simple device that can provide an accurate elevation comparison between multiple points that rival each other to be county high point or to be the highest summit of major peak, and therefore the summit that takes its prominence. It is based on the principle that you fill a host with the water and let them come to rest. The water level of both ends will be the same. Plumb up. Plumb up or plummet is a weight usually with a high pointed tip of the bottom suspended from the string and used as a vertical reference line or plumb up or sorry, or plumb line. It is a precursor to the spirit level in use to establish a vertical datum. Level Level device for establishing a horizontal plane. It consists of a small glass tube containing alcohol or similar liquid in air bubble. The tube is sealed and fixed horizontally in a wooden metallic block or frame with a smooth lower surface. The glass tube is slightly bowed and adjustment to the horizontal is indicated by the movement of the bubble. The device is on the level surface when the bubble is in the middle of the glass tube. Pull push roll. Pull push roll is a measuring tape that coils into a compact case. Ruler. A ruler, sometimes called a rule or line gauge, is an instrument used in geometry, technical drawing, printing, as well as engineering and building to measure distance of the rule straight line. PPE or personal protective equipment includes more than just protective clothing. There are three other important categories, including fall protection, respiratory protection, and visibility. Falling is one of the leading cause of death on construction sites. So using appropriate protective gear like a safety harness is one way to prevent this danger. Protecting the lungs is also important. So using respirators to prevent the inhalation of hazardous gases, vapors, and particles is another way to practice good safety. 
The visibility of your workers is also important on construction sites. So, enforcing the usage of high visibility vests keeps workers easy to spot, ensuring the ability to quick find anyone in case of emergency. It's no secret that there are some dangers associated with woodworking. You need to protect your body when working with tools of any kind. Or there can be some real risk of personal injury. Always wear personal protective equipment. Here are some of the personal protective equipment to be used in construction site. Hard hat. These are essential at most construction sites. These protect against head injuries related to swinging or falling objects. Striking the head against something or accidental head contact with electrical hazard. Hard hats should be inspected for dents, cracks, and other damage prior to each use. Damaged ones should be never be worn. Hearing protection. Chainsaw, jackhammers, and other tools and heavy equipment create noise level that can damage workers. Hearing. Particularly with prolonged exposure. Remolded or formable earplugs are usually the best bet. But acoustic foam line earmuff that tightly seal against the head can work well too. But I don't have it right now. Face and or eye protection. Safety glasses or face shield should be worn whenever there is a danger of flying debris or harmful dust getting in the eyes. Cutting, grinding, welding, chipping, and nailing are some activities that are necessitate protective eyewear. Along with basic safety glasses, some other protective wear to the face include welding shields, chemical splash goggles, and dust goggles. Work pants and work shirt. Workers should protect their full legs, full arms, and torso against cuts, scraps, burns, and other superficial injuries with thick, flexible work pants and shirt. This should fit closely and never be buggy while allowing for maximum mobility as you can see right now. Hand protection. Different types of work gloves are best suited to particular tasks and risks at construction sites. For example, there are heavy duty leather and canvas gloves for protecting against cuts and burns. Welding gloves for welders, heavy duty rubber gloves for working with concrete. Insulated gloves with sleeves for working with electric hazards and chemical resistance gloves for working with chemical agents. Reflective high visibility garments, brightly colored and or reflective jackets, vests or other upper body clothing is important for workers' visibility. It's generally advisable to wear it all times at the job site. But it's especially crucial along active roadway, in low lighting, in poor dust, in nighttime work. In certain circumstances, is mandated by OSHA. Awesome! Now that you have an understanding of our new topic, let us proceed to the next level for the activity. Directions Rule of false Read the following statements carefully. Write T if the statement is true and F if not. Number one, form work can be made using molds out of steel, wood, aluminum, and or prefabricated form. The answer is true. Number two, 
The operation of removing the formwork is known as stripping. The answer is true. Number three, the quantity of surface finish depends on the quality of the formwork. The answer is true. Number four, timber formworks are stronger, durable, and have longer life than timber formwork in their reuse as more to number two. The answer is false. Number five, the visibility of the workers is also important on the construction sites. The correct answer is true. Next, direction. Categorize the following exercises. Write EF for the formwork tools and MF for the material for formworks. Number one, bolt cutter. The correct answer is DF. Number two, plywood. The correct answer is MF. Number three, tie wire loops. The correct answer is DF. Number four, tie wire heel. The correct answer is DF. Number five, timber. The correct answer is MF. Number six, plastic formworks. The correct answer is MF. Number seven, and cutting nippers. The correct answer is EF. Number eight, tie wire strips. The correct answer is EF. Number nine, Steel formworks. The correct answer is MF. Lastly, number 10, aluminum. The correct answer is MF. I hope you enjoyed listening and watching this video lesson that I prepared for today. Because every single moment in our module in carpentry is very important and you can save money in expanding buildings of your house. You can use this in your daily lives, whether you are students, a family man, or a man of profession someday. Our dear parents, your guidance can make a difference on how will your children can accomplish the learning task. Kindly provide assistance. God bless in answering your module. If you have questions, just message your tell it teacher through text, call, or via messenger in your GC. I am sure they could help you. Once again, this is your radio teacher, Teacher Vincent Jefford A. Elbancol of Bamban National High School, Sir Bishop Fotog Radio, DWSP 101.5 News FM, your DepEd Radio Escuela. Goodbye everyone and have a good day.